Here we're going to look at a quick system of polynomial equations. So our goal is to find all real numbers x, y, and z, satisfying the following three equations with three unknowns. So we've got x squared plus y squared equals 6z, y squared plus z squared equals 6x, and then z squared plus x squared equals 6y. And usually with systems of polynomial equations, the big hint is that if you have an arbitrary system of polynomial equations, it's very, very, very difficult to solve. So if on a test or on some sort of math contest, you're asked to solve a system of polynomial equations, likely there's some trick that makes it really easy and there's only like a couple of very obvious solutions. And we'll see that'll be the case here. So I'm gonna break this down into two cases. The first is when we know at least two of these are the same. So let's write that down, at least two are equal. So like I said, that's my first case. And then my second case, so I'll call that case two, that will be all are different. So in other words, x is not equal to y, y is not equal to z, and x is not equal to z. But we're going to look at these totally separately. So let's look at this first case where we have at least two of them are equal. And notice that because of the symmetry between x, y, and z in our system of equations, we can might as well assume that x is equal to y. So now let's see what that does to our system of equations. So this first equation will now be 2x squared equals 6z. And then the second two equations are exactly the same. They are the equation x squared plus z squared equals 6x. So now we've got a system of two equations and two unknowns, which is maybe a little bit easier to deal with. So I first want to notice that we can use this first equation to solve for z pretty handily. So we have z equals x squared over 3. Now we can plug this value of z into our second equation, and we have a quartic polynomial in terms of z. So let's see what we get. We're going to have x squared plus, so z squared will be x to the fourth over 9 equals 6x. So we can go ahead and clear denominators here pretty easily by multiplying both sides of the equation by 9, and that'll give us 9x squared plus x to the fourth equals 54x. Now moving things around, we'll have x to the fourth plus 9x squared minus 54x equals 0. So the first thing you'd probably want to do is factor an x out. Then if you factor an x out, we're going to be left with x cubed plus 9x minus 54. And cubic polynomials are hard to solve. So notice we get possible solutions here, x equals 0 or the root of this cubic polynomial. But again, because cubic polynomials are hard to find solutions for, likely there's some obvious solution. And by the rational root theorem, you can start guessing obvious solutions. So the possible roots will be factors of 54, and what you can find is that 3 is a factor. So you can check that real quick. 3 cubed is 27. 9 times 3 is 27. 27 plus 27 minus 54 is 0. So that means we can factor out an x minus 3 like that. Now, if we factor out an x minus 3, we're going to be left with a quadratic polynomial. So it's got an x squared term, an x term, and then a constant term. We immediately know what that constant term is because we need minus 3 and that constant to multiply to 54. So that constant has to be 18. And now you can kind of guess and check until you get the coefficient of x here. And what you'll see is the coefficient of x needs to be a positive 3. So we're left with something like that. Okay, good. And then what you want to notice is that this guy right here, this quadratic polynomial gives you no real solutions. So I'll write that here. So no real, I should say maybe roots, but there are no real solutions to this equation from this factor, which means our only real solutions are x equals 0 and x equals 3. Now, if we plug x equals 0 back up here, we'll see that z is equal to 0. If we plug x equals 3 back up here, we'll see that z is also equal to 3. 
but we assumed that x was equal to y. So that gives us two solutions to start with. We've got the solution x equals y equals z equals 0, and x equals y equals z equals 3. So again, we've got two solutions. They are either all 0 or all 3. And that was from the case when two were equal. But notice if two were equal, that actually meant that all three were equal. So that's kind of interesting. Okay, so now let's jump into the second case. And the second case is all of the variables are different. So in other words, we know x minus y is not equal to zero. We know x minus z is not equal to zero. And we know y minus z is also not equal to zero. So we've got that system of non-equations. So next what we want to do is take linear combinations of our given equations in order to build a difference of squares type factoring. So notice I can subtract the first equation minus the second equation. That'll cancel out the y squared and I'll be left with x squared minus z squared equals 6 times z minus x. Again, we've got equation 1 minus equation 2. Furthermore, I can do equation 1 minus equation 3 and have a similar result. So that's going to give me y squared minus z squared equals 6z minus y, like that. And then finally, I can do my second equation minus my first equation. So that's going to give me y squared minus x squared equals 6x minus y. Okay, great. Now, like I said, we're really trying to build up this difference of squares factoring. So let's go ahead and factor this into x minus z times x plus z. And then we'll do the same thing here. So this is going to be y minus z times y plus z. And then this one right here is going to be y minus x times y plus x, like that. But now we can see that we can cancel some terms from each side of this equation. In other words, we can divide by x minus z, or z minus x, or x minus y, or y minus x, or so on and so forth. And we're allowed to make that division because we see that x minus y is not 0, so we're not dividing by 0. So in other words, we can cancel here with here if we pick up a minus sign. We can cancel here with here if we pick up a minus sign. We can cancel here and here if we pick up a minus sign. So that's our setup. So let's see what we've got. So we have x plus z equals negative 6. Okay, good. We've got y plus z equals negative 6. And then we also have x plus y equals negative 6. So we've got this new linear system of equations. Now I want to notice that we can immediately say that there's no solution here and that's because x plus z is less than zero. Whereas over here we know that x and z are both bigger than or equal to zero given that they are the sum of squares of real numbers. So we could like finish this off with that type of argument. Although we can also get a contradiction to this assumption up here just by taking linear combinations of these equations. So notice that I can subtract this equation and this equation, and that'll give me x minus y equals zero. And actually, I can stop at this point because I've reached a contradiction. My original assumption was x minus y is not equal to zero, but now I've ended up with the condition that x minus y is equal to zero. So what that tells me is that there are no new solutions from this second case. So our only two solutions came from our first calculation. And that's a good place to stop.